En tant que quête spirituelle, comme une entreprise spirituelle, boldly follow the initiatives. Suivez avec courage les initiatives. Sigue audacemente las iniciativas. Into the heart of God's vision for the church and creation. Vers le cœur de la vision de Dieu pour l'Église et pour la création. Hacia le corazón de la vision de Dieu pour la Église et la création. Then, in response to growing in sight about God's nature and will. Puis, en réponse à une compréhension croissante de la nature et de la volonté de Dieu. Entonces, en respuesta a la percepción cada vez mayor sobre la naturaleza y la voluntad de Dios. Continue to shape communities that live Christ, love and mission. Continue à façonner de les communautés qui vivent l'amour et la mission du Christ. Siga formando comunidades que vivan el amor y la misión de Cristo.
Amen, brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless you all. Today, I want to share a message with each of you on the theme, The Inward Journey Toward Jesus the Peacemaker. Throughout our lives, we have felt the peace of Christ. That peace is a peace that fills us, that helps us push forward and continue the path of the gospel in the way of life, the venture in which you and I believe. That peace overflows and allows us to continue constantly under the protection of the Holy Spirit. That peace helps us to move forward, helps us to face the storms, and persevere with what we have chosen for this life. That peace is the journey with Jesus Christ. It is the journey along with our brothers and sisters. It allows us to rely on witness, on evangelization, on each of the acts that we do in that peace, in that calm, in that tranquility. That is the peace only the Holy Spirit can help us rediscover, the one Jesus referred to when he said, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. The world can give us temporary peace, but a lasting peace, a peace of truth, a peace that can bring us closer to Jesus, that peace He gave us through His sacrifice because we believed in His Word, because we believed in what He wants for each of our lives. And that is the message that I want to leave with you, that when we are facing the storm or moments of anguish or illness, that peace is what must reign in our hearts. That peace is what must be rooted in our lives. When we believe in the perfect divine order of the Holy Spirit, peace will prevail. So, brothers and sisters, this is the message I want to share with you, a witness of life, the peacemaking witness of Jesus, when we let him into our hearts. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. This is Stephanie Mateo here in Via Tropicalia sharing this message with each of you. I love you in the love of Christ, and let us continue to be peacemakers through the mercy of Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, please accept my greetings. I am Farahu Mairini, spouse Laoud Takam Moanas, and I am member of the Community of Christ in France. I would like to share with you my inner experience on how I felt and accepted my call. It all started one evening when we were with my family around a meal. I received a call from Pastor Kahelani and Joey Williams to introduce me to my call to serve as a teacher. Following a very emotional exchange, I was overwhelmed with a mixture of emotions, both joy, so much that I was crying, but also fear, because I didn't know what God had in store for me. But what I was sure of was the answer I was going to give, although it was not immediate, because I needed to reflect. I asked myself the question, am I really capable of serving God as a teacher? I documented myself and turned to my mother to know about the role of a teacher. And I prayed to ask God to guide me and to enlighten the path I was going to take. I also remembered the enduring principles about the worth of all persons and all are called. Today it's me, tomorrow it's you. I then made the responsible choice to pursue peace on earth by giving my answer a few weeks later. And it was with a humble heart, full of joy and gratitude, that I decided to recommit myself to serve God, but this time as a peacemaker. I don't know if it was a coincidence or God's will, 
But one morning, I was confronted with a concrete example of what a teacher could face in his ministry. I lived this moment as an enriching experience and it confirmed my place in this ministry. And I would like to end this moment of sharing with a sharing from Doctrine and Covenants, section 161, paragraph 7. The spirit of the one you follow is the spirit of love and peace. That spirit seeks to abide in the hearts of those who would embrace its call and leave its message. The path will not always be easy. The choices will not always be clear. But the cause is sure, and the Spirit will bear witness to the truth. And those who live the truth will know the hope and the joy of discipleship in the community of Christ. Amen. May God bless you. In 2018, I embarked on a journey without really realizing I was embarking on the journey. And that started when I attended the European Peace Colloquy that was held at Dunfield House. Um, at the time, the weekend was really shrouded in mystery for me. I had no idea what a peace colloquy was or if I would enjoy it. Um, but I decided to attend the weekend knowing that I would be surrounded by friends and like-minded people. And I'm really, really glad that I made that decision because it turned out to be such a pivotal part of this journey that I have been on um, in the pursuit of peace. At the weekend, my mind was really open to the different approaches and perspectives to peace. There were some amazing speakers um, who spoke of their own personal experience with activism and really inspired me to do more for the pursuit of peace. Um, and also kind of gave me the courage to feel like anything is possible, um, which was really, really exciting. Um, and following on from the Peace Colloquy, we had discussions on the nonviolence resolution from Europe, um, which was really, really exciting to be a part of the community that was discussing that nonviolence resolution. Um, and even more excited to be so passionate and driven um, to make it happen. Um, so I felt very, very blessed to be part of those conversations. Um, and it was from that weekend that I really decided that I wanted to be at the World Conference. Um, and I really wanted to be able to see what was happening with this resolution um, and to continue on this journey that had started at the Peace Colloquy and just to see where it took me. So I decided that I was going and I attended my very first world conference, um, which I was a little scared about, a little nervous. I had never been to a world conference before. I wasn't sure what it would be like, um, if it would be for me, but I, like the Peace Colloquy, it turned out to be an event I'm very, very glad I said yes to because I met so many amazing people from across the world and I had so many life-giving conversations about the non-violence resolution, different people's culture, um, different experiences of being a community of Christ in different parts of the world. And I am so blessed to be part of a church that has so much unity and diversity. Um, and I really, really felt that being at that conference and sharing in fellowship with new friends as well as old friends. After the World Conference, um, I found myself at a few other events um, that were, in my eyes, continuing this pursuit of peace and continuing this journey that again had started with the colloquy. Um, one of these events was Green Belt, which is a musical festival that's held in the UK. Um, and it, at that year, in 2019, we had a group of members and friends from Community of Christ who were performing a set that was called Sing Peace. Um, and it was really, really exciting to be able to go and cheer and root for these people um, and also help invite the wider com Christian community that was at this festival um, and tell them a bit about who we were as a church 
um, and share that peace and that message, um, not only through the songs, but um, through those conversations and interactions that I was so blessed to be a part of. After that experience, I decided to attend my very, very first protest. Um, it was held in London um, and it was protesting against the arms fair. Um, I attended with a good friend, Andrew Bolton, and we marched under our Community of Christ banner um, in such a diverse community who were also sharing their support um, for peace. And there was a lot of interfaith dialogue. There was a lot of unity in the silence as we prayed together um, and stood united for peace. And now, following on from all of this, I look forward to returning to the Next World Conference and being able to continue this journey, continue having these conversations and continue to be inspired by people across the world um, to continue to pursue peace. And I'm really, really excited to see what conversations will be had regarding the non-violence resolution and to see where this journey will continue to lead me. Let us pray. God, Mother, Father, creating loving power, we come together joint in prayer to ask for your blessing. We had plans to gather physically at this time to celebrate our diversity 
and to give you our collective praises. Unfortunately, this is not possible. Yet we did find ways to unite. Across the oceans, we gather at this moment as your people. Together, we started the church here during Advent with the header, The People Walk. God, we are walking. And we pray, bless our journey. Today, we want to mark the beginning of a new section of our journey, the journey to the next World Conference. Whether we are coming from Australia, North or South America, Asia, Africa or Europe, our journey will be a different one. That's also true for our individual journey to you, O oh God. Help us to find our way. Give us strength and courage to go our way. Send us people to go with us, to cheer us on and to help us back on the path when we go astray. A well-known saying says, the journey is a destination. Even though we are having a goal, World Conference 2023, the journey is the most important part. I'm sure there are many paths, paths we are familiar with and feel comfortable on. But maybe the path that we have taken before cannot be taken anymore. Maybe we need to find a new path for us. Maybe we need to join others and support them on their path. Which path you may take, known or unknown to us, God bless our journey. We yearn for community with each other and with you, O oh God. Let us feel your presence on our way as we, step by step, come closer to each other and to you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come and bring light to a people in darkness. Come set us free from the chains we have made. We are your people.
is changing. Old forms are crumbling. New possibilities are emerging. We live between what was and what will be. We need faith, curiosity, openness, and boldness. God is challenging assumptions, shaking up structures, disrupting routines, and making connections. The Holy Spirit breathes anew into our lives, the church, and creation. God's aim is a new creation in us, among us, and around us. And nothing is more important than discerning what God is up to and our role in it. Doctrine and Covenants 162, paragraph 2c, urges, As a prophetic people... Discern the divine will for your own time and in the places where you serve. You live in a world with new challenges, and that world will require new forms of ministry. Discern the divine will. New challenges require new forms of ministry. Discernment is more than planning and or asserting personal views. It is engaging in spiritual practices so we can be more aware of God's activity and how best to respond. Discernment is willingness to venture with God beyond the familiar. If you or your group need a discernment guide, some evangelist and those who have completed the spiritual formation and companioning program are available. Recall Jesus' parable of the Samaritan. We will explore it extensively at World Conference 2023 with the theme, Courage. A traveler was robbed and beaten. Two religious figures, a priest and a Levite, passed the traveler but did not help. In fact, they crossed to the other side of the road. Then the Samaritan assumed not to be so religious, saw the nearly dead man and had compassion. The Samaritan boldly moved toward the man, tended his wounds, took him to a safe place, and paid the expenses for his care. Everyone saw the same situation. However, only one discerned what to do. The Samaritan perceived God's call and courageously responded. The others, captive to their human biases, were oblivious to God's call, even though they thought they were in harmony with divine will. The Samaritan saw as God sees, 
and responded as God does. That's the heart of discernment. A map of the future would be nice, but that's not possible given this time of cultural shifts and disruptions. Neither can we go back to the past because that world no longer exists. We must keep venturing boldly with God like people of faith and vision always have done. Our journey is not left to blind faith. Like a reliable compass, the Holy Spirit guides and emboldens us. And that compass works best as we are moving in response to God's call. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all the truth. The guide is the pathway. The journey is the destination. Throughout our history, prophetic voices have urged us towards God's fullest vision for creation. Our journey has included processes of clarifying our sacred story, identity, and purpose. The results are found in our mission statement, enduring principles, and other documents. With Scripture as our foundation, we take these vital sources of insight and focus with us as we journey. The Holy Spirit guided us to an ideal name, Community of Christ. It's faithful to our heritage and vision of the gospel lived in Christ-centered community. It emphasizes God's revelation in Jesus Christ and the importance of experiencing Christ in sacred community. Our name provides direction and focus. We also have one another as we journey our beloved worldwide faith community. We are a diverse people. Through the Holy Spirit, we are being fitted together as a global community through which Christ lives. We are becoming a dwelling place for God or holy temple spanning the earth. Our beautiful temple reminds us of this destiny. As we journey, we are discovering the power of community in Christ expressed locally in distinctive fashions while upholding a unity of vision, foundational beliefs, and mission throughout the world. A hopeful future for community of Christ is possible if we choose it. The Holy Spirit urges us to boldly venture there with God. Doctrine and Covenants 165, paragraphs 1, C through E, affirms, Community of Christ, a divine vision is set before you. Lovingly invite others to experience the good news of new life in community with Christ. Undertake compassionate and just actions to abolish poverty and end needless suffering. Pursue peace on and for the earth. Let nothing separate you from this mission. It reveals divine intent for personal, societal, and environmental salvation, a fullness of gospel witness for creation's restoration. Our vision speaks of holistic salvation for persons groups, and the entire creation, salvation in all dimensions. God's vision of restoration is much bigger than many imagine. The World Church Leadership Council is involved in group discernment. This includes constant listening to the Holy Spirit through the voices of various ages, cultures, and life experiences around the world. The Council has drafted a statement of emerging themes. Excerpts include 
the soul of community of Christ is expressed most fully as we embody Jesus Christ, the peaceful one, and His mission. This happens through relational, spiritual, invitational, and globally connected Christ-centered communities actively pursuing justice and peace on and for the earth. We are discovering that a posture of simplicity, agility, and flexibility will equip and poise us to faithfully live the heart of our calling in a changing world. These sentences are not the end of discernment. They provide opportunities for explorations of principles, possibilities, and insights in all apostolic fields. The church's constant call is to discern the time in which we live, our varied contexts of mission, and what our approaches to ministry should be as we embody the soul of community of Christ and follow Jesus, the peaceful one. As we journey to World Conference, we are urged to prepare spiritually for joint discernment, important decision-making, inspiring worship, and intercultural community building. In September, I will present added information and perspective to help us prepare. I look forward to speaking with you again at that time as we continue to venture boldly with God.
Generosity is a discipline, a spiritual discipline practiced in response to God's grace and love. We received first from God His boundless grace and an ending love. We are called to share because we first received, and we can only give what we have. The question is, what, what is it that we have to offer? I have three little girls, and recently I have been blessed with a baby boy. I thank God for that, and it is one of the reasons I must give and show gratitude to him. This must be put aside. Back to my point. One of the girls one day came to me and asked me, Dad, why is it that you only give me money to give to God at church? Does God not need our rice, our chicken, and our vegetables? The question silenced me, and I pondered how to begin responding to her. Something came to my mind, and I asked her, What do you have to give today apart from the money I give you? She ran into her bedroom without saying a word and got one of her dresses, and she asked me, Dad, I have this to give to God today. So I asked her, between the two, what would you feel comfortable to give to God today? If you must, if you must choose one. And she responded, I will give my dress because this is what I think God needs today. I have been giving him money. What do you think God needs most today? God gave us an unconditional love when we needed love. He gave us his only begotten son when we, we needed his salvation. And we are to share the same with those who are in need. We must give to God for his mission into the world. As we experience the good news of new life in Jesus Christ, I invite you to join hands and partake in the compassionate ministries to abolish poverty and end needless sufferings, individually and cooperatively. And the universe needs your generosity. Let us give towards this noble mission of Jesus Christ, which is our mission. May the good Lord bless you as you continue being generous. Amen. Sue for peace, and lift up an ensign of peace, and make a proclamation for peace unto the ends of the earth. To pray for peace is to pay attention to the world, to open your ears to hear the pleading of mothers and fathers who desperately seek a future of hope for their children and to recognize that in their welfare resides your welfare. To pray for peace is an inward and outward journey of transformation when we move beyond ourselves and into the lives of others. Our prayers for peace boldly name injustice and suffering and compel us towards compassionate action that reorders the world. In that way, our prayers for justice and peace are prophetic. When we truly, truly pray for peace, the poor are cared for attended to by the mercy of God in and through us. When we truly pray for peace, our racism is challenged and we start to see everything and everyone differently. 
Lorsque nous prions vraiment pour la paix, when we truly pray for peace, house doors are unlocked and opened for immigrants, et nous détruisons les camps des réfugiés, and we break down refugee camps and welcome immigrants and refugees into our rural and urban communities. When we truly pray for peace, we do no harm to the earth and all its precious living beings. Nuestras oraciones por la paz Our prayers for peace have the power to shape a future where the reign of God can happen. Our prayers are works of hope. God of Shalom, may we embody your love and peace in the world. Spirit of peace, through our prayers and actions, enable us to live into your deepest longing for your precious world. Peaceful one, may we boldly venture toward you in, in solidarity with all who suffer and seek a future of hope. Sigue audazmente las iniciativas Boldly venture into the heart of God's vision for creation. Y la creación. Busca la paz. Pursue peace on and for the earth. Go and share the peace of Christ. Kabie Wabanye Omutende Wakwa Klistu. Go and share the peace of Christ. Ven y comparten la paz de Cristo. Go and share the peace of Christ. Go and share the peace of Christ. Va partager. La paix du Christ. Go and share the peace of Christ. Vayan y compartan la paz de Cristo. Go and share the peace of Christ. See you.